Diabetes mellitus is a group of diseases characterized by high levels of blood glucose resulting from defects in insulin production, insulin action, or both. 20.8 million people are diagnosed with diabetes in the US, which represents 7% of the population. Diabetes consists of two types. Type 1 in type 1 diabetes, the cells that produce insulin are destroyed by an autoimmune disease, resulting in insulin dependence commonly detected in childhood. However, in type 2 diabetes, blood glucose rises due to either a lack of insulin production or insufficient insulin action, which is commonly known as insulin resistance. Type 2 diabetes is commonly detected in obese patients over 40 years old. And it's worth mentioning that type 2 diabetes leads eventually to beta cell failure which inevitably results in insulin resistance. So how is diabetes diagnosed? Diabetes can be diagnosed by several methods, three of which are commonly used. First, the fasting blood glucose test. It's the most popular because it's readily available and it's very affordable. For non-diabetics, fasting blood glucose level should be less than 100 mg per deciliter. However, if it's between 100 and 125 mg per deciliter, the patient may be considered a pre-diabetic. In this condition, could be managed by diet and exercise. For patients having fasting blood glucose over 126 mg per deciliter, this indicates diabetes. The second way of diagnosing diabetes is the oral glucose tolerance test, or OGTT for short. In this test, the patient will drink a glucose rich solution and a blood sample will be drawn after 2 hours. Blood glucose levels should be less than 200 mg per deciliter. The third test is glycated hemoglobin test or HbA1c. This tests the glucose bound to hemoglobin which gives an estimate or an average of the blood glucose level for the last 3 months. For non-diabetics, it should be less than 7%. Now that we have a brief idea about diabetes, we can talk about insulin and its role in the body. Insulin is a phenomenal hormone that is biosynthesized in the body. It was discovered in 1921 by Banting and Best when they successfully extracted insulin from a dog's pancreas. Insulin is a protein which consists of an A and a B chain, linked by two disulfide bonds. Chain A consists of a 21 amino acids, whereas chain B consists of a 30 amino acids. So how does it work? Insulin works on the receptor tyrosine kinase. Binding to this receptor initiates a signal transduction that eventually leads to facilitated diffusion of glucose into the cells. Insulin is considered to be the first line therapy in type 1 diabetes. However, in the case of type 2 diabetes, a number of treatments may be employed prior to initiating insulin. Due to type 2 diabetes being an insulin resistance disease rather than an insulin deficiency, insulin plays a very important role in the metabolism, causing an increase in carbohydrate metabolism, glycogen storage, fatty acid synthesis, amino acid uptake, and protein synthesis. Thus, it's considered to be one of the most important anabolic hormones. Insulin is given through the subcutaneous route. 
and it comes in many types. Rapid acting, like Humalog, with a short onset of 10 to 30 minutes. Short acting, which is the regular insulin with an onset of up to one hour. Intermediate acting, an example of that would be NPH. And Lantus would be the long acting insulin. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you liked the video, make sure to like it, subscribe, and tell me your suggestions for any future videos. And see you next time.